Good afternoon, South Africa, and a very warm welcome to Afternoon Express. I'm your host today, Jeannie D. Almost all alone in the studio, in the loft, but not not all alone. I'll show you why a little bit later. Today we are going to be discussing something that plagues so many young South African females. It is the the lack of availability, I suppose, of funds and of sanitary pads for young girls. For many families in underprivileged communities who struggle to put food on the table. Sanitary pads are a luxury they just can't afford. Oftentimes, they turn to cheap, unhygienic alternatives like old newspapers, cardboard, and plastic bags. And in many cases, the girls will skip school entirely. We have on the loft today some representatives of organizations that are making a difference in these schoolgirls' lives. We are also very privileged to have the Deputy Minister, Buti Manamela, who is responsible for planning, monitoring, and evaluation for youth development, as well as the administration of the presidency. He will be speaking to us about what the government is doing to combat this problem. But as I said, I'm not all alone in the love today. Danilo is in the kitchen. Yes, good afternoon, South Africa. I'm Danilo Aquisto, and welcome to Afternoon Express. If you're a big animal lover, besides all that's going on in the couch today, we're going to be visiting Paws for People, a really incredible organization that takes animals to hospitals uh, to be with some of the patients that are there. So it's an incredible story, the one that you do not want to miss. But in the kitchen today, I am so grateful to have Marley Roberts with us today. Marley, you are my favorite woman to cook with in this kitchen so far. You have such a cool personality about yourself, and today we're making a dish that I've never heard of before. It's it's called a posset, and we're making a lemon and strawberry, well, a lemon pistachio posset with a bit of strawberry thrown in. First of all, I hear that strawberry is not a berry. I believe it's an aggregate variety, which means that it's actually, it forms on the outside of the ovary of the fruit, mm. and each little seed that you see will be where the ovary part is. Ooh. So quite interesting because we always refer to it as a berry. Well, amazing. I'm looking forward to making this dish with you alive in our loft today. So make sure if you guys want that recipe and the shopping list and want to know more about what a posset is, make sure you stay tuned to today's show. Otherwise, go to afternoonexpress.co.za. The recipe shopping list is available over there, plus on our Facebook page, Afternoon Express. And if you guys do want to tweet us live during the show today, Afternoon Chat is the Twitter handle. You can use the hashtag Afternoon Express. Otherwise, find us on Instagram. We're there too. Or give us a call. 083-913-3728. Some hard-hitting topics happening on the show today. And I hope you guys are going to engage live on air. For now, though, let's join Jeannie on the couch. Thanks, Danilo. Now, girls missing school due to a lack of sanitary pads has become a major, major problem in underprivileged communities across South Africa. Many of these girls miss, on average, about four school days in a month. Now, this can add up to more than, than a month and a half worth of school each year. All of this because sanitary pads are an expense many families in South Africa simply cannot afford. We're joined now by Lisa Adlam, uh, and a brand ambassador of Subs Pads, a business that has developed an affordable washable pad system, as well as Project Dignity, which aims to increase and uh, increase in education and knowledge of physiological emotional changes in young women, and by so doing, increases their self-esteem. So welcome, thank you so much for being here today. Now, innocently, for Mandela Day, um, friends of mine and I put together all of these packs to hand out at women's homes. And I just thought, well, let me just pack in a few little pads here and there. And I had no idea of the depth of the situation. How bad is it? You know, we often, and when I started out, I thought it can't be that bad, but it really is a very um, big problem. You can speak to any social worker, um, any school teacher, any headmaster, and they will tell you they know of the problem. They know of girls that miss school every week, so it's or every month. So it's just a vast problem. So these girls are basically just they don't have access to money, so they don't have access to sanitary towels, and they just end up staying at home instead of going to school. Yes, and some of them are also in far off rural places. In other words, they not they they don't have access to the shops like we do. So there's another problem, another dimension that makes it impossible for them to get hold of the packs. My heart is absolutely broken for these young girls. And I like that your, your, your um, company is called Project Dignity because that's exactly what it's about. I think these young girls must be stripped of their dignity when this happens to them. Yeah, I think especially with the very unhygienic, um, uncomfortable solutions that they have to use every month. Um, and I think not being able to complete the education, that's also a huge problem because yeah. 
their whole future is basically held back by one small little product that they can't afford. So what motivated Sue Barnes to start Subspads and, of course, Project Dignity? I think Sue was very much on the same place where you were. Um, the school came to her, her daughter was in school, and they just wanted um, to help the girls with the little packs and with the little pads. And then Sue realized, that, and the same like you did now, but if this is such a huge, huge problem, um, are we really helping the girls if we're giving them one pack for one month? What's going to happen the next month? It's not going to be a sustainable exactly. solution. And then she, um, coming from clothing manufacturing um, environment, just would know she just can't live with it. She has to do something. And she then started the whole process of designing this product um, that's now called Subs. Okay, so Sue Barnes is an absolute genius. I wish I could meet her one day, but this is essentially what she has created. These are the subs, panties and pads. So it comes in a pack like this, and then in the pack you get three pairs of panties, which basically have little clips on, and then these are the, the reusable pads. How many times can they be reused? Well, these packs can be used for five years. What? You give a girl a pack and for five years she sorted. it. So the beautiful thing is if you can help her in grade eight, she sorted for a high school career. Where That's, are these available? It's on our website um, called subspads.co.za um, and it's also on Facebook, um, subs washable pads. So it's um, basically very easy to order online. It gets posted to you, but we also have stock in Cape Town and in Gauteng and in, um, it's actually manufactured in KwaZulu Natal. I see. Now this is obviously started off as a non-profit organization. So how is this being funded at the moment for these packs to be distributed to girls in underprivileged communities? Well, we basically just knock on as many doors as we ca can. Because the um, girls don't buy these. These get given to girls at school. It gets given to them, yeah. I mean, okay. one example is we were beneficiary of a concert um, a few weeks ago and all the money from that concert will go towards helping girls. But we um, like to get everyone involved. We have Absolutely. this initiative called Subs Heroes. There's a Facebook page called Subs Heroes. Oh. And it started off with 12 girls. They did a 202K cycle race, an all-girl team, four subs, and we created um, the team, raised awareness, did the race. And from there, we decided but everyone can be a Subs Hero. If you bake cake and you sell it at school and you help one girl, you're a sub-hero. If you do the Cape Epic for subs, you're a sub-hero. Um, we had a few friends that threw a party, they raised 10,000 rand, so we're gonna help a school of 42 girls and we're gonna get all the girls back. Amazing. What a beautiful initiative. I absolutely want to get involved because, as we said before, the gravity of the situation is quite, is quite intense. So how much does one pack cost? One pack is 205 rand, 205 okay. rand, excluding the courier cost, um, depending on where you um, live. But that's the cost, 205 but rand. But it'll last a girl five years. Five years. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Now, how can normal people at home who are interested in this, in this initiative get involved? I think they, they can, first of all, start joining us on our Facebook pages. There's Project Dignity, there's Subs Washable Pads. Um, and if they want to, if they like the whole Subs Heroes things, they can join the Subs Heroes. We're going to walk the Cape Town um, Marathon um, 4.2 Ks for the not so fit people yeah. as Project Dignity to create awareness and raise funds. And this is just to raise money, like big bulks of money, so that you can go into communities and then distribute these yes. packs. The bottom line is the more funds we can get, whether it's from CSI, from government, from individuals, from corporates, the more we can help girls because our approach is very simple. We get the money, we make the packs, we give it to the girls. Um, Excellent. And the more we can do it, the happier we are. How many girls have gotten a pack to, um, to date? More than 38,000 in four years. Good but that's on Sue's you. Doing. That's you Sue's girls are moving. angels. Yeah. Thank you so much for chatting to us. This is an absolutely brilliant, brilliant initiative. And please do visit our website, afternoonexpress.co.za, because all of the details of subs pads and how you can get involved is on our website. Now, don't go anywhere. After the break, we continue the conversation. And remember, if you have any questions for our guests, don't hesitate to call us on 083-913-3728. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to Afternoon Express on 3. Now, just a reminder to go out and get yourself your 50 Rand off Essay's number one foundation just by purchasing Revlon Colorstay Foundation now at any leading retail and pharmacy stores nationwide. Now, all you have to do is take a selfie with the product and you and your plus one, your bestie or your lover, could win a 24-hour experience in Bonang's life. Hanging here on set, enjoying the city life by dining at one of her favorite restaurants, staying at her favorite hotel, and turning love on. Whether you are in love or looking for love, just take a pic of you and your Revlon Colorstay Foundation and tweet at Afternoon Chat using the official hashtags, hashtag Foundation Fridays and the hashtag love is on, or post it on our Facebook page, Afternoon Express. Now this amazing prize is valued at 25,000 Rand and it includes an all expenses paid trip to Cape Town for two, dinner at an A-list restaurant, plus 10 thousand rand shopping spree so get tweeting right now just like these viewers have already done and don't forget the hashtags hashtag foundation fridays and hashtag love is on but for now danilo is making something so sweet in the kitchen <laughs> <laughs> making a clone of myself it's so sweet that's right south africa we're making something absolutely delicious i'm sure you guys must be wondering hey i want a day in the life of danilo because he gets to make so many sweet things in the afternoon express kitchen but no marley uh, first we're making a posset and i've never heard of a posset before what exactly is a posset and, and posset is a, of english origin and they used to drink it in the 19th century and it used to be dairy milk mm. that was curdled with ale oh. and then it became a drink so sh like a shooter just to warm you up oh, and yes. now it's just turned into a nice modern dessert lovely so it's got a very uh, english heritage to mm. it and we're going to give it a kind of italian twist by adding some pistacchio in there and you pronounce it pistachio <laughs> but it's promise you in italian it's pistacchio well, I'll say pistachio for today. <laughs> okay, so how can I help you? So what we are going to do, it's, it's a really easy dessert. The only thing that Yay. you need to do, it needs to stand overnight. Okay. So it also frees you up to do some other stuff while mm. you're busy. So you, we've taken cream here, mm -hmm. and we use the Woolworths Nice Double Cream. Because, double thick. Yeah, cool. double cream, because we need the fat content. And we're just going to put that into a pan, and what you want to do is you don't want it to boil. Okay. So as soon as you've added that in, we so need to... So you put two, two of these containers well, four, in, so four, it's about 500 grams. Yeah, 400, 400 grams. Moles that okay. We, doing Mills. um and then you just want to sweeten it up and i'm just going to move it off the heat for now and okay. you see we've put some vanilla pod into the sugar already oh i see so that's all those little black spots yeah, on there yeah and that's lovely if you have an extra seed leave it in your mm. sugar and it flavor it flavors it, oh, it smells body. amazing yes, right. just like that it smells good yeah. so that and goes straight in obviously that's quite a lot of sugar is it possible yeah. to maybe replace the sugar with something like a xylitol or? you can replace part of it or perhaps not all of it um just look at all those there's some you know the, the qualities of the xylitol be careful yes. but you can use less there okay and then we're also going to add this pistachio in last nice color mm. nice <laughs> depth of flavor mm. and then the the most important part i'll leave some for for later but okay, the most important part is we need this to curdle slightly so you always need to add an acid in and oh. lemon in this is nice and soft so we'll start i must just put, oh. do this the right I, way around. i automatically have a negative uh, sort of connotation with curdling it almost sounds like something's going off what exactly yeah. is the process of curdling and why do we want this so thing to curdle? Uh, it's just the acid reacts with the um, protein in the in the um, cream that's okay. there naturally and we just want it to thicken so you don't oh. want it to curdle it makes a become soft, soft no. curd mm. you don't want it to to really become sour and form those okay strings so we'll just do this and that's also why we when we add it in we'll heat this now mm. but the lemon juice will only be added right at the end okay, see, once you've removed it from the immediately yeah. so it doesn't need to cook in so if you want to perhaps half these sure. and see if we can get some juice on i'll put this back on the heat um, do you want some juice now to put these in immediately almost as soon as we remove it okay. move it from there so i'm just going to leave that there um you can use this you can actually mm. juice it in here okay while we wait Amazing. And, you, and you need approximately half a cup of juice for the 400 mils of cream that you use. Okay. So if, you're, um, if you use limes that's quite acidic or if you use grapefruit, you know, you just adjust, adjust it according to taste. Your amounts. Okay, cool. Yeah, and I'm going to leave this on the side. I must do probably a whole one because we're not going to get half a cup from just no, half. No, it might be about both. Oh, both. Okay, so, so both keep things. going. Okay. And then I'm going to move over here. That's cool. Um, and then I'm going to start. So we're also looking at strawberries today. So these are the Sabrosa strawberries. That's a variety 
specially or exclusively. It's a browser. Well, it's, yeah, and it's known for, you can see it's a beautiful red color all the way around. We've just removed the leaves oh, for I this. See. And we're just going to add all of these into... Are they just a sweet variety? It's a very sweet variety. It's also a variety that's available early in the season. Uh, um, yeah. and, and you told me a very interesting story, and I'm sure the rest of South Africa wants to know the story about when strawberries were first introduced. So, um, and that's why I paired it with the posset. Don't you want to move that posset just off sure. the heat for us, please? Cool. So, um, strawberries were first served or recorded to be served in the court of King Henry VIII. Okay. So I thought it was quite a nice, you know, the connection with the with English the dessert and oh then the word. dessert. And then I found out today that strawberries are in fact not a berry. Which you're explaining that they're, they're uh, what do you call it? A, what is uh, your uh, word? An aggregate. aggregate. Yeah. An yeah. aggregate. So they, it's because they've got so many different seeds on them. They're not just one. Yeah, they don't can, create a whole. Yeah, it's just not one single berry with seed. the seeds on the inside. Okay. And then we just add some lemon juice in here. So what we're doing here is we're essentially making a coolie. Mm -hmm. um, a coolie. But a coolie, which is just a, a, a sauce or a syrup oh, that you can serve like a puree. with it. It's, it's a nicer word than okay. a puree. Oh, fun. Learning new things today. <laughs> Posset, cure, puree. What's it called? A cure. No, coolie. A coolie, not a, a coolie. puree. Oh, whatever. I'm learning new things today in the And kitchen. then, you know, with strawberries, we, we've seen now there that vanilla both um, is a good combination. Nuts are always a mm -hmm. good combination. We know balsamic is a good combination. And then we also have lemongrass and ginger. Oh, Works really well, and that will just lift the flavors yes. with the lime. Almost gives it a winter flavor to it. Yeah. Can I start adding this lemon juice in? This yeah, side? that'd be great. And you can just mix it all through. And I'm just going oh. to add some of this cordial on here. And then this can also, quite nice in summer, you can use this as a cooler. So once we've mixed this all up, mm. you can cool it down and then add some, you know, tall glasses, ice, piece of strawberry yes. in and pour that over with some sparkling water or wine. Oh, amazing. Um, so I'm going to make some noise, Go sorry. For it, by all means. As long as you get the job done. And so after you've, uh, what you call it, coolied those, and you've made your coolie that side, and actually this has got to go into the cups. We're going to pour that, those into the cups, and then you leave that and okay. set it overnight. Amazing. Okay. Um, We're going to get this ready in the meantime, however, South Africa, and you uh, in South Africa need to go and check out exactly how you can win some amazing prizes right here on Alternative Express simply by going green. The Afternoon Express team is going green. Join us every Tuesday at 4 p.m. until September as we bring you the most innovative trends in sustainable fashion, food, decor and design, as well as handy tips to help you reduce your carbon footprint. Answer our Go Green question every Tuesday and stand a chance to win a thousand Rand Woolies gift card every week. Plus, simply by entering, you also go into the big draw for the ultimate grand prize worth over half a million rand. Including a dream sustainable kitchen makeover from Cordev fitted with Bosch appliances with 300,000 rand. Also, up to 250,000 rand worth of home upgrades so you can live off the grid. Plus, food and homeware from Woolworths valued at 75,000 rand and 25,000 rand towards a school of your choice with my school. So, go big. Go green with Afternoon Express every Tuesday at 4 p.m. to win these amazing prizes. Express yourself. Willis and I are collaborating to raise 100 million rand through the My School program. Are you with us? Welcome back to Afternoon Express, South Africa. So in the kitchen today, we're making a really, really delicious dessert. It is called a posset. We're making a kind of variety of our own. We're adding some lemon into it. We're adding some strawberries, as well as some pistachio in there. It is so delicious, and we've let our set for a little while in the fridge so long. So, Madly, what more is there to do to complete this dish uh, as a whole? Th those are really clean flavors. Okay. So we want to add summer to it. So we're going to take strawberries again, mm -hmm. and we've quartered the strawberries, and we're going to make a lovely salad. Salad, add some of the fresh mm. flavors in some mint, some ginger, some lime. So what 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 makes a salad? Because it's going into a dessert, so I've never really had dessert salad What's for dessert. Fruit, so. fruit salad. Oh, like a fruit salad, yes. I suppose. Okay, yeah, cool, yeah, yeah. fantastic. And we just um, what we will do is with these mint leaves, because you know the old-fashioned thing is to put a big blob of mint in, mm. and nobody eats it. So we'll take all the small parts of the leaves, okay. and that becomes part of the salad. So if you want to do that for take me, all the miniature ones. Yes, and these have just been cut. Um, if you're not afraid, those leafy parts are obviously edible. If mm -hmm. you're not afraid, you can leave that on. Oh. I'm once again squeezing some, <laughs> <laughs> squeeze some lime over there because that also lifts. And then just some fresh ginger that okay. we're grating over and that. And that's to obviously complement the ginger that we've put inside the actual posset itself. And the coolie. 
coolie. That went the into coolie the coolie and the, yeah. oh, sorry, it went to the coolie, not into the pasta. Yeah, and you can also, if you have pickled ginger at home, you can also use pickled ginger. That yeah. will also be lovely for that. And one more time, just talk me through how long you left that uh, pasta in the fridge for. So if, if it's such a small amount that we have to set, like we've put in there, because we really want to focus on the freshness of the salad, yes. two hours would suffice. Okay. Otherwise, if you want to fill the cup up, I would leave, leave it, it overnight. overnight. Yeah. Okay, amazing. Because it's a really, it's a soft set, so you, you have to serve it inside something as well. You can't do it without. Yeah. And don't forget, Salafik, if you want all of these ingredients, the shopping list, etc., and the recipes itself, it is always available for you on afternoonexpress.co.za. It is a whole new world, that website, when it comes to these recipes. There's starters there, there's some really nice winter main courses, some summer courses, as well as these awesome, awesome desserts. And you can really impress a lot of your friends if you come over and make them a posset, and you'll finally know what it is all about. So I'm, I'm very excited to maybe try this one at home. It's also a cool. lovely r recipe that they serve in quite a few restaurants now. Ah. But if you want to start with that and then just dish our glasses and I'll follow with the um, coolie. Cool. So basically we just put a few, how many strawberries, like two no, or three or whatever yeah, it is. Just divide be that between the six glasses okay. would be awesome. So the more generous you can be, yeah. the better, I suppose. And I'll start with that. Mm. That pasta hasn't been sitting in the fridge, right? You just pure, well, you didn't puree, you... The, this, this, the coolie. Sorry, the coolie. The I'm getting so <laughs> confused with all of these <laughs> words and terms. I think the lovely thing about this is if you, if you know you're going to entertain after work, mm. you make everything the day before. Yes. And all the flavors infuse beautifully, but if you have to do it on the Saturday afternoon, mm -hmm. you can also do it. So this is lovely chill, but it's also lovely right now because you will really get all those strawberry flavors coming oh, through. Absolutely amazing. So I'm so excited to feed this. Don't forget this uh, one. This one, let's swap sides so you can continue Thank your you. side there. And, and you can, can see here. how the nuts and the mint and everything just adds nice texture to it as yes. well. Yes. Um, and I think that's part of the, you know, the success of any anything that you eat. It visually it needs to look beautiful, but it, mm. in your mouth as well, you need to have those lovely sensations happening. Yes. It's almost like what I've really learned from this afternoon express kitchen is learning how to relieve stress simply by cooking. Because you get to taste nibble foods, you get to nibble, you get to have a bit of fun. And speaking about things that are stress relieving, Bonnie's talking tea in the garden. Of life these days, it's easy to become consumed with work and life and in turn become very stressed. There's no better way to unwind after a long day than with a cup of tea. And of course, fresh packed rooibos is a great choice. Let's join registered dietitian Kelly Schroeder to share some tips on how to help manage the stresses of our daily lives. Welcome to the loft, Kelly. Hi, Bonnie. It's lovely to have you join us again. Great to be here. Kelly, what is stress and how does it affect our lives? We have only one response to stress. So it doesn't matter if you're having a particularly traumatic day at work mm -hmm. or if you're running away from a lion, your body responds to stress in exactly the same way. So Is that the flight or fight? Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. So you'll get a pounding heart, dilated pupils, you'll be ready to run. So the problem is that we have so much stress in so many different from so many different sources in our lives. Right. So you have work stress, you have finance stress, you have family stress, relationship stress. It's coming from all sides all the time, and it's unrealistic to expect anybody to live a completely stress-free life. Wow. So it's not necessarily about having a stress-free life. It's about being able to manage your stress. That's exactly cool. what I'm saying. Yeah. So what are some of the tools that you can share with us, things that we can implement at home to help lessen our stress? Okay. So what we're really doing is we're saying, yes, of course, you need to manage your stress, yeah. but you can't avoid it entirely. So yes. what are we going to do to make ourselves more resilient to stress and to help to, help to distract ourselves from stress as well? Okay. So if you've got a very busy day, it really helps at the end of the day to change and shift out of that mode of being very focused and very stressed. Ah. So try to get some exercise, maybe do some yoga, do a little bit of meditation. So do physical things that shift your energy completely. Right. And then the other way to handle it is through food. So the foods and the drinks that you have every day mm -hmm. really contribute to your stress response or help you to handle it better. Right. That makes absolute sense because in a high stress job like mine, I find that I'm on this high energy level all day and when I get home, it's hard to switch off and I feel so wired. Yeah. So then you can go back to those two methods that I was talking about. The one is to shift your energy. So you could take some time out, maybe go to a yoga class or go yes. home, sit down on your couch. You could try and meditate, <laughs> but you could also just drink a cup of tea yes. and relax and think through the day. So it's actually taking some time out to do something that's not part of the stressful day. Right. And that will help you to sleep better. The other way that you could handle it is what you're eating and drinking during the day. So if you're having a stressful time at work, mm -hmm. if you're drinking a lot of caffeine, that contributes to your stress response. Mm -hmm. So during the day, instead of coffee breaks, tea breaks. Right. Ideally, rooibos tea breaks because it has no caffeine yes. in it. The other thing that's a really good idea is increase your antioxidant intake. So 
That means eating more vegetables and fruit and also eating a really balanced diet that's full of nutrition that will help your body to handle stress. Yes. So tea is a really good source of antioxidants. So if you're taking the time out at the end of your busy day and you're getting some nutrition along with it, it's ideal. And of course it comes in all these different flavors, lemon, honey, ginger, so it doesn't feel like you're having another boring cup of tea. No, it's delicious. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kelly. Thanks for having me, Bonnie. <laughs> There's no quick fix cure for stress, and a little bit of stress is not too harmful, and no single method will work for everyone. But it does help to know that there are some simple things that you can do to assist in lightening the load. Thank goodness for the natural goodness of fresh pack robots. Goodness comes naturally. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, any person who has spent time in a hospital knows that a visit from a loved one can make all the difference when it comes to a healthy recovery of the body and spirit. But not everyone has family and friends available to visit them in that sensitive and traumatic time. So this is why a daily visit from the Pause for People team puts a lasting smile on patients' faces, uh, faces, faces at Netcare Unitas because sometimes a furry friend is all the therapy you need. Dogs have a way of finding the people who need them most and fill a void they never knew existed. Pause for People takes this one step further and visits patients at Netcare Unitas so these furry friends can ease a little pain and bring a dose of love and joy. Well, having the dogs here at Netcare Unitas Hospital makes the patients feel calm and loved because they immediately experience an emotion that we as a human being can't offer. We immediately see that their anxiety levels decrease, they feel calmer, they relaxed, um, because dogs, you know, don't ask questions. They just give love. They come here every second Thursday, and they come to um, cheer up the children, because children fight cancer and brain tumors, which are very hard. So the dogs come every second Thursday to cheer up the children and give them strength so they can fight. We also see sometimes that pain levels decrease because they think of something else and they really interact with them on a different level that any human being can interact. Um, and the mommies are excited and the mommies want the dogs to come. They, they've actually been our friends for so long, I think about 20 years here at Neke Unitas Hospital and um, we can see that the kids, they can't wait to connect with them, just to hug them, just to feel you know, just a love that no one can express actually here with us. The breeds involved in Paws for People are very diverse. From long and slinky Dachshunds to lovable Labradors and even shaggy sheepdogs. But a favorite among the patients is a rare breed called Shiloh Shepherds. This team is lucky enough to have two of these gentle giants, a six-year-old brother and sister duo who have been therapy dogs since they were puppies. The beautiful Willow and Dakota. Dakota's my favorite because he's fluffy and reminds me of a lion. But all the dogs have a special place in my heart. And all the poor people, ladies, I love it when they come to visit because they're so generous and kind and everything. They make me feel nice because they're good. My favorite thing is to play with Dakota. I think what makes Dakota special is he's a very big teddy bear type of dog. He's got a very gentle, soft temperament. He really does care about people. When we are getting ready to go out, um, he runs around like a crazy person following me all over the house because he knows he's going to do therapy work as soon as he sees his therapy clothes and as soon as he sees me wearing these clothes. And it's not a case of the dog just arrives. He actually arrives and he desperately wants to interact with the with the children, with the, the patients. It just changes the environment. The dogs just bring in something that's not connected to their illness. This is my dog, Samwise. He is one and a half years old. He's an Australian Shepherd. And um, he's a very lively boy, but he brings a nice um, friendly energy into a hospital setting or anywhere he goes, really. He's got a nice sense of humor and he loves to make people laugh um, and he knows if he does something that makes them laugh then he will repeat it over and over and over because he, he knows he gets a reaction. Well Sammy is extremely friendly, 
I love Sammy. She is a beautiful, beautiful dog. And I just feel this connection between us, a connection of love. It's such a privilege for us at Medicare Unitas Hospital to have pause for people with us and thinking about us and bringing in the dogs that can, they just give a different medicine that even the doctor can't give, you know. They make them feel good in a way we can't. And, um, and that's the difference. We need our loved ones, we need our family, but we need the dogs close to our heart. Just that loving, loving care, an awesome, awesome therapeutic uh, medicine for us and for the kids. Everybody deserves to feel positive and loved, and programs like Pause for People prove that animals like laughter can be the best medicine in the toughest circumstances. Sit. Oh. Good boy. Bino, keep their tails wagging. Welcome back. Now, today on The Laughter, we are discussing the lack of access and funds for sanitary pads in underprivileged communities. We are now joined by the Honourable Deputy Minister, Buti Manamela, who is responsible for the national planning, monitoring and evaluation in the presidency, and more specifically on today's subject of discussion, responsible for youth development. Deputy Minister, we are so honoured to have you in our loft today and that you were able to find the time. Thank I'm you very, for being I'm very here. honored to be here and thank you for uh, having me here. With absolute pleasure. Firstly, I'd like to start off knowing a bit about your background in your passion for education. Look, I mean, I think, uh, you know, there is no way that we are going to make bigger strides in changing the quality of life of young people without investing in their education. And that's why, uh, you know, every second or third day, one of the big things which I talk about, which I encourage young people to really take into consideration is education, going to school, uh, you know, forming that relationship, that affair. I always uh, say to especially young teenagers that on their Facebook status, when it says relationship, they must say with my school or with my, uh, you know, books or with my library. Because I think, uh, you know, uh, education would uh, create the type of equitable society that, uh, you know, we all uh, are building and we're all wishing for. Yeah, I, it's such an important message. I love that. I think you're going to have to make Facebook friends then with all of the kids in South Africa <laughs> so that you can constantly remind them. Yeah. Now, obviously, the, the subject that we're tackling today is the fact that there are young girls, two million of them, in fact, around about, that's the, the, the approximate number, yeah. of girls that are missing over a month of school within a year yeah. because they aren't able to attend school because of, of, of a shortage of sanitary towels and of course funds to buy these sanitary towels. Yeah. So what is government doing um, to try and combat this? Look, I mean, uh, some, some years back when we were involved in what we refer to as the Right to Learn uh, campaign, uh, one of the key things that came up was the fact that, uh, you know, two million young girls are missing a month of schooling, as, as you indicated. And, and for us, this was a big challenge. And it, it was for something as basic as a sanitary towel. And, you know, we started calling on to government to do something about it. At the, at the time, I was the uh, National Secretary of the Young Communist League. And we mobilized also youth organizations, student organizations to, uh, you know, make contributions, uh, you know, and from that work, a lot of NGOs have been set up. Government have made a commitment, uh, uh, you know, including the, 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 the ruling party to ensure that young girls have got access to sanitary towel. It's no longer a taboo. I mean, um, mm. when I go to schools, uh, you know, young girls would look at me as this uh, uncle or big brother who's talking about something mm. that they are very shy about. And 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 I mean, it's it's not it's not an easy. Um, uh, subject and topic and, no, and a whole isn't. range and a whole range of uh, uh, you know uh, leaders perspective about the issue has drastically changed because it touches at the heart of the education of the girl child in our country and not only on their education it touches on their future it ch it touches on uh, uh, you know their ability to reproduce and therefore their reproductive right because young girls who do not have access to sanitary towels would then resort to other means uh, you know for them uh, to either go to school or go on about with uh, with their lives and some of those uh, have an impact on uh, you know the ability to reproduce in the future um, you know but 
uh, you know, and the type of interventions we've come up with also uh, results into, uh, you know, uh, uh, employment for, for women, for instance. We're involved with Dignity Dreams as one of the NGOs that uh, uh, manufactures reusable uh, uh, sanitary towels. So mm. that's got an impact. I wanted to touch on that because yeah. I think it is such a difficult subject to talk about, especially to young girls. Yeah. And I think at some point they must feel like they've lost their dignity because it might be shameful to their male classmates as well. So, I mean, why, I, it's obviously so important and it seems obvious that you've gotten involved in Dignity Dreams, but why specifically was that something that you said that I have to make a stand for? Look, I mean, it, it's, uh, it, it's, it's essentially because of the passion uh, that, that uh, uh, you know, I have and the organization, uh, the Young Communist League, which I belong to, which uh, had on the education of the girl child and the amount of uh, uh, time that was lost, uh, you know, to education. And, and subsequently, when I was appointed deputy minister in the presidency, I uh, decided that this is one campaign that, uh, mm. you know, I would want to uh, continue with, um, you know, raising funds, uh, ensuring that uh, more and more girls' uh, dignity are restored, uh, you know, through uh, access to sanitary yeah. uh, uh, towels. So, so it's, uh, uh, for me, it's, it's, it's something that I think everyone, uh, you know, everyone, every leader in the community and everywhere else, uh, you know, should be involved into exactly. uh, into such a project. Earlier we were speaking to a representative from Subspads, who, who very oh, similar yeah. to Dignity Dreams, makes yeah. these reusable towels. So now Dignity Dreams is something, I mean, how is this funded and how successful has this campaign and initiative been? Look, I mean, Dignity Dreams uh, have got various sources of funding, but how we are involved with them has been through the SMS campaign, which we launched uh, in in July, uh, I mean, in June, as a build-up to the Nelson Mandela Day, mm. where we committed that we're going to raise 18,000 uh, sa reusable sanitary towels, uh, which we'll then distribute from the 18th of July, which was Nelson Mandela's Day mm. uh, this year. And I'm happy that we, we reached that target and we're actually getting more and more people, uh, you know, to uh, commit uh, towards uh, increasing that target. 18,000 is a small drop in the 2 million young girls out there who needs uh, help. Exactly. There are many other organizations, by the way, through the uh, uh, work that we've been doing uh, and many innovative ways in which uh, people are introducing new ways of, uh, I mean, uh, you know, of sanitary towels or pads, uh, you know, as a way to, to mitigate against the, the impact. And, and I'm quite happy that people are not necessarily dependent on government, but that people are doing things on their own out there. They're saying, look, uh, uh, you know, we, we believe in actions that take place in communities and such initiatives, uh, you know, and all of that. And, and um, uh, it's, it's also not only about Dignity Dreams, it's also about the many other initiatives that are there, which we are, uh, you know, obviously willing to work with because we believe that everyone has a role to play exactly. and everyone will make an impact for us to ensure that girls have their dignity. Now I have to ask because it's not every day that I have a minister on my couch that I can bully. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to take my gloves yeah. off. I have to ask, why are these sanitary pads not as freely available then as choice condoms for example? Surely government should yeah. maybe come up with, you know, or get one step closer yeah. into doing this for our young women of our country. Yeah. Look, I mean, the, the uh, Department of Social Development, uh, together with the Department of Health, um, and especially at, at most of the uh, provinces, do provide, distribute sanitary towels, and particularly in schools. I agree with you that, uh, you know, uh, they should be as widely available as choice condoms. Absolutely. And uh, secondly, that uh, those which are sold in the uh, supermarkets should actually be uh, VET zero rated, um, you know, just as uh, condoms should be, just as books should be, uh, you know, and all of that. And uh, I think the other very scary factor is the fact that the uh, majority of uh, uh, both, I mean, especially the 
uh, um, you know, the, the one you use once, the sanitary towels that you use once, are not manufactured locally. And, and, and you know, those are some of the things which, uh, uh, you know, government will have to look into uh, in terms of local production. So you're going to champion so, so that for us? Of course, of course. It's something <laughs> which we're already you. championing. And we believe that in that way, it will drastically reduce, uh, you know, the cost and also reduce the dependence of young girls on, uh, you know, NGOs and all of that. Exactly. But it will also mean that more South Africans can contribute more, uh, you know, sanitary towels yeah Dep De De deputy minister please do stay you're not going anywhere and in fact just now Danilo's gonna love this the deputy minister said what is cooking in that kitchen it smells <laughs> delicious so we're gonna be feeding you some of that a little bit later also when we return Lisa joins the conversation and we will be taking your calls your tweets and your Facebook messages we'll be right back after this Welcome back to Afternoon Express and of course we are joined by the Honourable Deputy Minister and of course Lisa from Project Dignity. Now we have Sandra Miller on the line who is the founder of Dignity Dreams. Sandra, thank you for joining us and thank you for the great work that you are doing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now you've recently started a campaign for Women's Month called Hashtag First Period. Can you tell us a little Correct. bit more about that? Yes, um, you know, first of all, you must admit, haven't I got the handsomest person on my side? <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, we, you know what we have found? We hand out the sanitary towel, but we found that it's not, it's not enough to just be handing out sanitary towels. We have to also educate the, these young girls because the fact of the matter is in the rural areas, these girls don't even know what a period is. They, nobody's told them, so they're afraid, they are myths, they are taboos. So we take a social worker with us to deal with girls at risk. And th sadly also, these girls have no idea they're fertile once their period starts because nobody has told them. So we see our role as far more than just... Um, handing out sanitary towels, we have yes. to educate these girls, which is why we've, and, and because people don't really want, to, you know, um, not everybody is as fortunate as I am to have such a great man uh, standing behind me, but we, we need people to share their experiences, and we're asking them to please use the hashtag first period so that we can put it on Facebook, on Twitter, they can email us, we can have a storyboard so that we can say to, to other people, start the conversation, start the, the uh, chatting. Exactly. Thank you so much for all of the amazing work that you are, are doing. Wonderful chatting to you, Sandra. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. Wow, that is such an important message because I recently did, did a talk um, on Women's Day about the, the AIDS rate as well in South Africa. And I think if this is happening to women at this age, apparently the higher the, ra the age rate at the moment or the age that most girls are being infected by HIV as well is bet from between 12 and 14, which is around the same time that they would get their first period as well. So the educating these girls is of vital importance. Look, I mean, I think the, the education component is actually the difficult, but raising money, getting to manufacturers, the, the sanitary pads and all of that, I think that's the easy part. But getting to the schools, you, uh, you know, uh, uh, getting these young girls who are very shy, who don't want to talk about sex or sexuality mm -hmm. issues. Uh, I mean, when we went with Sandra to one of the schools, and and they're looking at me, they're like, he, he's holding a sanitary towel, what's happening? Uh, you know, and he wants yeah. to talk about, uh, talk to us about this. And those are the stereotypes and the taboos that are there. And, and I think, you know, not only is it important for, for us to get young girls to talk about their sexuality, but also young boys. But, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I think it, it, for me, breaks that barrier for both young girls and boys and teenagers to understand, uh, you know, issues of sexuality 
uh, to talk about them, to understand what happens when you have your first period or when your, uh, you know, girlfriend mm. has a, a, a period. If a man is more know, educated about it, he's more able, I think, to respect what's going on exactly. to, with the woman. Exactly, exactly. And I think that's, uh, you know, I mean, we, we, we unfortunately had to do, uh, you know, had to ask the boys to excuse themselves because the girls were feeling shy in, in the one of yeah. the meetings we went to. But in reality, it has to be, uh, you know, education Absolutely. for everyone. Absolutely. Well, let's take a call on the line. We've got Matlatse on the line. Hi, Matlatse. What's your Hi, question or comment? You? Very well, thank you. What's your question or comment? Uh, good. Just to be quick, after I saw the assignment problem, I decided to collect from my friends and to actually just donate to needy kids out there. And then it's only one... Um, it's difficult to identify schools because I have a full-time job. So I just want to find out if there's a there's a program here in Joburg that I can actually call to my friends and give them to, and then they'll see where to actually donate to. Or do they probably have schools on the list or churches or anything or anywhere they can donate? Because it's really, it's really difficult from, on my side to actually just go out and the trip or look for schools and everything and everything. But I'd, I'd just like to be part of the program. Okay. Exactly. I mean, if she can hashtag me on my uh, Twitter at Buti Manamela, and we'll we'll see how we get those collected or whatever contribution she wants to make, and then we'll distribute those in Johannesburg or anywhere she wants them distributed. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. But that's wonderful. It's a great initiative that she took, and I think that's part yeah. of we what you said that we have to empower people to take action. That we don't have to just wait. When whenever we go to a school and we do a handout. Um, and we hand out, we, we in a fortunate position to hand out to an entire school, we do try to get the school to take ownership of the next year, because exactly. even if you help a whole group, a whole school, next year there's gonna be a new group. And what we're also trying to, to get um, them to understand <coughs> that they must take ownership, they must raise funds exactly. throughout the year, they must get their stakeholders like churches, Absolutely. businesses, yeah. Um, harness things like International Girl exactly. Child Day. Exactly. I must stop you there, unfortunately, because we are running out of time. But I just want to thank you both for all of the work that you are doing, really. And we've got some dessert for you as well. <laughs> <laughs> and Marley is not the dessert. It's the actual dessert, which looks absolutely incredible. Marley, thank you so much for creating this in awesome dish. It looks absolutely divine. And I'm actually really glad, can I guys say, being a guy in this environment, learning about periods, I think is something that is taboo, I think, for guys to do. So, Minister, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank I you. feel honored to be part of this conversation as well, to learn a little bit more about what women go through. But from us here on Afternoon Express, have a good evening and happy eating. Ciao. Ciao. And look what I can give you now. <laughs> Tomorrow on Afternoon Express, South African power couple Zoraida Jardine and Josh Lindbergh join us in the loft. And in the next installment of our fabulous fashion series, we profile Joburg-based designer Rich Mnisi. Uh, never feel good production.